Greetings psychologists, I'm just going to provide a brief and broad overview of the distinction between the excitatory and inhibitory effects of different types of neurotransmitters. So first, an overview. So here we've got a presynaptic neuron and as a result of an action potential it's started in the cell body and conveyed along the axon to the axon terminals where we've got some vesicles that are storing the neurotransmitters. Those neurotransmitters are going to be released into the synapse. Some of these are going to bind with the receptor sites on the postsynaptic neuron. More about that in a future clip. And that's going to have one of two effects, either an excitatory or an inhibitory effect, which is the, uh, the purpose of this video. So let's zoom in and have a look at excitatory neurotransmitters such as glutamate. So here we've got the cell membrane. So on this side we've got inside the postsynaptic neuron and here we've got the outside. And what you'll notice on the outside of the postsynaptic neuron is we've got a bunch of sodium ions. And these are positively charged. And when a excitatory neurotransmitters such as glutamate binds with the appropriate receptor on the postsynaptic neuron. You'll briefly open up these, these channels and what's going to happen is we're going to get a bunch of this positively charged sodium that's going to go from outside the cell membrane to inside. So therefore the effect of this is that it's going to depolarize that postsynaptic neuron. It's going to make it less negative and it's going to have an excitatory effect, which means it's going to be more likely to fire. And so as a result of that, glutamate is going to be pulsating throughout the central nervous system and it's going to play a key role in cognition, learning and memory in particular, which we'll look at later in the course. Inhibitory neurotransmitters, on the other hand, are going to have an opposite effect. So in this case, we've got a bunch of potassium ions which are located, the K1s here, located on the inside of the postsynaptic neuron. And when an inhibitory neurotransmitter binds with the receptor sites on the postsynaptic neuron, it's going to open up some of these um, potassium channels which we've got uh, right here. And some of this potassium, which is positively charged, is going to leak out, leak out of the postsynaptic neuron. And another thing that can happen is we can get some negatively charged chlorine ions that can actually come in um, to the postsynaptic neuron. And so what's going to happen is the, the postsynaptic neuron is actually going to be hyperpolarized, or it's going to become more negative, and it's going to be less likely to fire. And you might say, well, what, what's, what's the importance of that? Why, why does this occur? Well, GABA, which we're going to learn a lot about in, in Unit 4 in particular, when we look at um, some mental health issues, particularly with phobias, it, it counterbalances the effects of glutamate. So it, it has a calming effect. So it, if we didn't have inhibitory neurotransmitters like GABA and serotonin, your brain would be overly wired. It would be highly anxious, it would be hard, hard to switch off. So, so GABA plays a very important role in, in, allow, in, in counteracting the effects of, of excitatory neurotransmitters such as, as glutamate so that we have an optimal level of functioning. And when, when this becomes out of balance, which we, again we're going to learn about later on, um, that's when we can have various um, disorders such as anxiety disorders and phobias.